My Stella talks about how she used a booklet called Listen to Me to write down what she knows about her son Mitchell to prepare for his review and to do a person-centred plan. I need to start making him independent as he's growing up and that's really one of the things the, doing the person-centred reviews really taught me the fact that I need to let him go and I need to try and make him as independent as possible. Because the thing is, in all the times we've done the reviews, I mean, we've had statements in the past, Mitchell has never been present. And I've carried along thinking, well, there's no need. It never occurred to me at, at any stage that that person should have a say with regard to what he wants and, you know, and, and his needs. And we just carried on making decisions and he's not been around. And when the review came along and we suddenly realised I had to really think, not about me, but about Mitchell, what exactly does he want? And there were loads of things that he wanted which wasn't happening. The review just made me focus totally on him, whereas in the past, you're not. The focus was on me. What do I want for Mitchell? And I just think it's really sad that, you know, this, is, this, was been, this has been going on for so long and now it's changed. I had a phone call. Somebody phoned me and said, um, there's this scheme going on. Would you be interested in doing it? I'm thinking, I'm game. <laughs> you know? So Lorraine came to see me and then she brought along with her um, Listen To Me um, workbook and another one, I think it's by Helen Sanderson, I'm not sure. And she said, well, look, have a look at these, have a look at these and see what you think. And I said, well, we said Mitchell has to be involved in it. And I thought, well, I don't think you'll manage it. Even I was one of those doubters. I'm saying he won't do it because in a, in a situation, I mean, an hour and a half, I'm thinking, no way is Mitchell going to be sitting in a room for an hour and a half. And, you know, it just couldn't, it just couldn't be done. But then I thought to myself, but, the, the, but having read through it, I suddenly realised, my goodness, this is about a child. This is about him. It's not about me. And I thought my fears, has, that, that's got to be put aside for him. And so I went through the Listen to Me workbook and I saw that it asked about likes and dislike, what makes you happy. And I, I did try to get Mitchell to do it and he just couldn't. I mean, I sat with him and I said, look, Mitch, just fill it in. And, and, and I realised that we weren't really getting anywhere. So what I decided to do was I thought, well, you're the best person. You know him. The best thing you can do is to, you know, take yourself away from it. Just concentrate on Mitchell and, and, and write down exactly what it is about him that people like and what is important to him. And that's what I was able to do it. And I typed this out and I went to the meeting with it. And then Mitchell said to me, oh, what is this? And I showed it to him. And I think because he's quite very good with visual things like words, he was able to understand exactly what I was trying to get at. And he really got the cue of what he had to do from, from the notes which I'd made. And that's how we got on. But as I said, completely from the blue. And I thought, well, this was great. And really thankful that I, Mitchell and I were chosen to do this scheme because it's been really good for us. And the other thing we wanted to talk about was um, exactly um, what he would be doing later on. Would he be doing the exams and so on? And they have put him forward to do entry level English and mathematics. And that's all because we've had the person centred review. One of the things Connection said to me was, um, well, what would Mitchell want to do? Would he want to go to college? Mitchell can stay at his school until he's about, well, he will be 19 going on 20. And I said to her, there is absolutely no need for Mitchell to go to college. I said, the reason is he's expressed the need to work. And she kind of looked at me really shocked and well, why isn't he going to college? I said, because his life skill, he's already being taught life skills at home. He doesn't need to go to college for someone else to do because we're already doing that with him. And we said, what he would like to do when he finishes is to obviously work preferably something he enjoys. For instance, he's got all these drawings, Mother's Day cards and everything over there. That's what he does. He's very artistic. And something like that would be really good for him. And um, she was kind of, well, surprised. Well, work. And I said, well, as he goes older, he'll, he'd want to live on his own. And that's another thing that shocked her and, and even surprised me, the fact that I can, I can feel that as he grows older, he would need his own place. Whereas before we had the review, I was thinking, my goodness, I'll have him forever. He'll be with me forever. But then I suddenly realised, no, he's not. 
this is this is what's available to him. He will be able to have his own place. Obviously, he'll have to be under supervision. There'll be somebody there to sort of care for him. But it just makes me a lot more, you know, very happy to the future. Whereas before, I was kind of wiring and thinking I was on my own. So I don't really see it as a problem. I think it's an exciting time for Mitchell in view of what's been happening with the valuing people. The thing I would be applying to me because it's happening is to remember that Mitchell is not, he will not stay a child and he needs to be um, independent. And I think my goal is always the independence, the big I. That is important for me to recognise. And my intention is to ensure that he he's like every other child and given the rights and independence that you know, you would need as you're growing older.